Chapter 28 Flight of the Prince Harry felt as though he too were hurtling through space. It had not happened. It could not have happened. Out of here, quickly said Snape. He seized Malfoy by the scrap of the neck and forced him through the door ahead of the rest. Ray began the squad brother and sister followed. The latter both panting excitedly. As they vanished through the door, he realized he could move again. What was now holding him paralyzed against the wall was not magic, but horror and shock. He threw the invisibility cloak aside as a brutal faced Death Eater, just to leave the tower top, was disappearing through the door. Petrificus totalus, the Death Eater buckled as though hit in the back with something solid and fell to the ground. Rigid as a wax work, but he had barely hit the floor when he was clambering over him and running down the darkened staircase. Terror tore at Harry's heart. He had to get to down below and he had to catch Snape. Somehow the two things were linked. He had to get to down below and he had to catch Snape. Dumbledore gitmesi lazım ve Snape yakalaması lazım. Ha, tamam. O kadar şoktu ki somehow the two things were linked. Hani bir şekilde ikisinin arasında bir şey oldu. Ondan dolayı şu an yaşadı, şok yaşıyor. Snape, Dumbledore'u öldüren insan cümlesi kafasına kurulmuyor yani daha. Şok da şu an. He could reverse what had happened if he had them both together. Dumbledore could not have died. Burada bir türeyim. Ne olur ne olmaz. Devam. He left the last ten steps of the spiral, spiral staircase and stopped where he landed. His wand raised. The dimly lit corridor was full of dust. Half the ceiling seemed to have fallen in and a battle was raging before him. But even as he attempted to make out who was fighting whom, he heard the hated voice shoot. It's over. Time to go. He heard a hated voice shoot. It's over. Time to go and saw Snape disappearing around the corner at the far end of the corridor. He and Malfoy seemed to have forced their way through the fight and sketched. And if the Ozega Snape in Usher Shupay Gurmism Bisabi de Benjashaya, Dumbledore and Zay Fire in Day the water the Snape onu öldürdü falan gibi oldu. Ama gerçi Dumbledore yine çok zayıf ve haldeyken Snape'in onu iyileştirdiğini de biliyoruz. Eli yüzü taktığı zaman komaya girmesi falan artık neyse. Ama hani şu an böyle çok da o bağlantıları kurmadan direkt Snape Dumbledore zayıfken kendi savunamıyorken onu öldürdü falan oluyoruz. Öyle. Yani Snape'e gıcık oluyorsak eğer bayağı bir oluyoruz yani şu an. As Harry plunged after them, one of the fighters detached themselves from the fray and flew at him. It was the Virvov Fenrir. He was on top of Harry before Harry could raise his wand. Harry fell backward with filthy matted hair in his face, the stench of sweat and blood filling his nose and mouth. How could he the breath in his throat? It refused to tell us. Harry felt Fenrir collapse against him. With a stupendous effort, he pushed the werewolf off and onto the floor as a jet of green light came flying toward him. He ducked and ran, head first, into the fight. His feet met something squashy and slippery on the floor and he stumbled. There were two bodies lying there, lying face down in a pool of blood. But there was no time to investigate. Harry now saw red hair flying like flames in front of him. Ginny was locked in combat with the lumpy dead eater, Amicus, who was throwing hex after hex at her while she dodged them. Amicus was giggling, enjoying the sport. Crucio, Crucio, you can't dance forever. Pretty impediment, I yelled Harry. His jinx hit Amicus in the chest. He gave a pig-like squeal of pain, was lifted off his feet and slammed into the opposite wall, slipped down it, and fell out of sight behind Ron. 
Professor McGonagall and Lupin, each of whom was battling a separate fate, each a wrong bear. Beyond them, it is all tongues fighting an enormous blonde wizard who was sending curses flying in all directions so that they ricocheted off the walls around them. Cracking stone, shattering the nearest window. Hiri, where did you come from? Jin cried, but there was no time to answer her. He put his head down and sprinted forward, narrowly avoiding a blast that erupted over his head, showering them all in bits of wall. Snape must not escape, he must catch up with Snape. Take that, shooted Professor McGonagall, and he glimpsed, glimpsed the female that eater, Alecto, sprinting away down the corridor with her arms over her head, her brother right behind her. He launched himself after them, but his foot caught on something, and next moment he was lying across someone's legs. Looking around, he saw Neville's pale, round face flat against the floor. Neville, are you? Mal, right. I'm all right. Mal, right. Muttered Neville, who was clutching his stomach. Hiri, Snape and Malfoy ran past. I know, I'm on it, said Hiri, aiming a hex from the floor at the enormous blonde that Eater was causing most of the chaos. The man gave a howl of pain as a spell hit him in the face. He wheeled around, staggered, and then pounded away after the brother and sister. Hiri scrambled up from the floor and began to sprint along the corridor ignoring the bangs issuing from behind them. The eyes of the others to come back, and the mute call of the figures on the ground whose fate he did not yet know. He scrambled up from the floor and began to sprint along the corridor, ignoring the bangs issuing from behind them. The eyes of the others to come back, and the mute call of the figures on the ground Mute call. Ve mute kolların, mute figürlerin kolları, kolları da şey, koz, e, ne? Yani onların arkasından gidersen bizim gibi sessiz sakin, ölmüş bir beden olursun falan gibi bir şey mi? Yani, öyle bir şey mi diyor? Bilmiyorum, devam ediyor. His kedi on the corner, his trainer slippery with blood. Snape had an immense head start. Was it possible that he had already entered the cabinet in the room of requirement, or had the order made steps to secure it? To prevent the Death Eaters retreating that way, he could hear nothing but his own pounding feet, his own hammering heart as he sprinted along the next empty corridor. But then spotted a below the footprint that showed at least one of the fleeing that eaters was heading toward the front doors. Perhaps the room of requirement was indeed blocked. He scattered around another corner and a curse flew past him. He died behind a suit of armor that exploded. He saw the brother and sister running down the marble staircase ahead and aimed jinxes at them, but merely hit several bewitched the wicked witches in a portrait on the landing. Huren screeching into neighboring paintings as he left the wreckage of armor. He heard more shoes and screams. Other people within the castle seemed to have awoken. He pelted toward the shortcut, hoping to overtake the brother and sister and close in on Snape and Malfoy, who must surely have reached the grounds by now. Remembering to leap the vanishing step halfway down the concealed staircase, he burst through a tapestry at the bottom and out into a corridor where a number of bewildered and pajama clad Hufflepuffs stood. Hey, we heard a noise and someone said something about the dark mark began Ernie McMillan. All of the way out, Harry, knocking two boys aside as he sprinted toward the landing and down the remainder of the marble staircase. The oak front doors had been blasted open. There were smears of blood on the flex stones. And several terrified students stood huddled against the walls, one or two still covering with their arms over their faces. The giant Gryffindor hourglass had been hit by a curse, 
and the rabbi is written words to fully with a loud rattle onto the flagstones below. He flew across the entrance hall and out into the dark grounds. He could just make out three figures racing across the lawn, heading for the gaze beyond which they could be separate. By the looks of them, the huge blonde death eater and some way ahead of him, Snape and Malfoy. The cold night air ripped at Harry's lungs as he tore after them. He saw a flash of light in the distance that momentarily silhouetted his query. He did not know what it was, but continued to run. Not yet near enough to get a good aim with a curse. Another flash shows retaliatory jets of light, and Harry understood. Hagrid had emerged from his cabin and was trying to stop the eaters escaping, and though every breath seemed to shred his lungs, and the stitch in his chest was like fire. He sped up as an unbidden voice in his head said, Not Hagrid, not Hagrid, too. Burayı tam anlamadım, bakıp geliyorum. Şu kuvari kelimesine bakıyorum. Buna baktıydık lan tekrar, değil mi? Taş ölçe. Böyle bir av gibi falan da bir anlamı varmış herhalde. In the distance that momentarily silhouetted his kuvari, his avını, onun avını Snape, Malfoy, onun avı, Harry'nin avı Oşra falan böyle bir şey herhalde. Sonra da o silüet e, diye anlattığı olayın Harry Anderson diyor. İşte şey oldu, Hagrid olduğunu anlıyor falan. Böyle herhalde. He did not know what it was but continued to run. Not yet near enough to get a good aim with a curse. Another flash shoots retaliatory jets of light and Harry understood. Hagrid had emerged from his cabin and was trying to stop the death eaters escaping. And every breath seemed to shred his lungs, and the stitch in his chest was like fire. And every breath seemed to shred his lungs, and the stitch in his chest was like fire. He sped up as an unbidden voice in his head said, Not Hagrid, not Hagrid, too. Something caught Harry hard in the small of the back, and he fell forward, his face smacking the ground. <clears throat> Blood pouring out of both nostrils. He knew even as he rolled over, he was wound ready. That the brother and sister he had overtaken using his shortcut were closing in behind him. Impedimenta he yelled as he rolled over again, crouching close to the, to the dark ground, and miraculously his jinx hit one of them, who stumbled and fell. Tripping up the other, he leapt to his feet and sprinted on after Snape. And now he saw the vast outline of Hagrid, illuminated by the light of the crescent moon revealed suddenly behind clouds. The blonde Death Eater was aiming curse after curse at the gamekeeper, but Hagrid's immense strength and the toughened skin he had inherited from his giantess mother seemed to be protecting him. Snape and Malfoy, however, were still running. They will soon be beyond the gates, able to separate. He tore past Hagrid and his opponent, took aim at Snape's back and yelled, Stupefy! He missed. The jet of red light soared past Snape's head. Snape shooted, run, Draco, and turned. Twenty yards apart, he and Harry looked at each other before raising their wands simultaneously. Cruz, but Snape parried that curse, knocking Harry backward off his feet before he could complete it. Harry rolled over and scrambled back up again as the huge death eater behind him yelled, Incendio! Harry heard an explosive bang and a dancing orange light spilled over all of them. Hagrid's house was on fire. Fangs in there, you evil Hagrid blood. Cruz yelled Harry for the second time, aiming for the figure ahead illuminated in the dancing firelight. But Snape blocked the spell again. Harry could see him sneering. Now unforgivable curses from you, Potter. He shooted over the rushing of the flames. Hagrid's yells and the wild yelping of the trapped fang. 
you haven't got the nerve or the ability. In your car, he roared, but Snape deflected the spell with an almost lazy flick of his arm. Fight back, he screamed at him. Fight back, you cowardly. <clears throat> Covered, did you call me, Potter? Shoot at Snape. Your father will never attack me unless it was four on one. What would you call him? I wonder. Stood there again, blocked again and again and again until you learn to keep your mouth shut and your mind closed, Potter, Snape, Snape. Blocked again and again and again until you learn to keep your mouth shut, Sessiz Büyüyak Nebaşı Jackson, and your mind closed, Potter. So, şey yapıyorum, zinifend yapıyorum, ne yapacağını anlıyorum falan diye herhalde. Sneer, Snape, deflecting the curse once more. Now, come, he should let the huge death eater behind, did he? It is time to be gone before the ministry turns up. In pity, but before he could finish this, James, excruciating pain hit Harry. He killed over in the grass. Someone was creamy. He would surely die of this agony. Snape was going to torture him to death or madness. No roared Snape's voice and the pain stopped as suddenly as it had started. Harry lay curled on the dark grass, clutching his wand and panting. Somewhere overhead, Snape was shooting. Have you forgotten all orders? Potter belongs to the Dark Lord. We are to leave him. Go, go. And Harry felt the ground shudder under his face as the brother and sister and the enormous Death Eater obeyed, running toward the gates. He uttered an inarticulate yell of rage. In that instant, he cared not whether he lived or died. Pushing himself to his feet again, he staggered blindly toward Snake. The man he now hated as much as he hated Voldemort himself. Sectum, Snape flicked his wand and the curse was repelled yet again. But he was mere feet away now and he could see Snape's face clearly at last. He was no longer sneering or jeering. The blazing flames showed a face full of rage. Mustering all his powers of con concentration, he thought, Livy. No, Potter screamed Snape. There was a loud bang, and he was soaring backward, hitting the ground hard again. <coughs> and this time, his wand flew out of his hand. <coughs> he could hear Hagrid yelling and Fang howling as Snape closed in and looked down on him where he lay, wandless and defenseless as Dumbledore had been. Snape's pale face illuminated by the flaming cabin, was suffused with hatred just as it had been before he had cursed Dumbledore. Suffused, the Yoshna bir bakalım. Dolu, nefret dolu bakıyor şu an. You dare use my own spells against me, Potter? It was I who invented them. I, the half-blood prince, and you turn my inventions on me like your filthy father, will you? I don't think so. No. Burada bir duruyoruz. Buradan şey anlıyor. Sektum Sempra'da Snape'in, Levi Corpus'da Snape'in, yani zihni fendi anlıyor. Resmen Harry'e zihni fendi yapıyor. Hangi büyü yapacağını görüyor, engelliyor Harry'i falan. Levi Corpus da Snape bulmuş ama moda olmuş okulda falan. Hatta James de Snape'in üstünde kullandı falan. Not cool. Not cool at all. Bunlar kesinlikle adil hissettiren durumlar değil yani. Adil ya da adil değil demiyorum. <gülüyor> ama Snape'in neden adil değil diye hissettiğini görebiliyor. Kendisi bir büyü şey diyor, keşfediyor. Büyü meşhur oluyor, kendisine karşı kullanılıyor, kendisi kullanamıyor oluyor falan. Sektum Sempre'yi zaten yasak olduğu için kullanamıyor falan. Not cool at all yani. Sonuç olarak. No, bu no bence başka birine gitti. He had died for his wand. Harry'e gitmiş. Snape shot a hex at it and it flew feet away into the darkness and out of sight. Kill me then, Pantadiri, who felt no fear at all, but only rage and contempt. Kill me like you killed him, you coward. 
Don't want to scream his name. And his face was suddenly demented. Demented. Bakın. Demented. Teki demen. Bildiğin o kelimeyi demented olmayan bir anlamda kullanmış falan. Suratı böyle deli yani. Direkt kontrolden çıkmış. In human. As though he was in as much pain as the yelping. Holding dogs stuck in the burning house behind them. Call me covered. Nefret ediyor. Covered diye sesinilmekten falan. Cesur adam falan diyor. Stumbler diyor en azından bir kere falan. Bana kalırsa biraz takıntısı var ama yani. Burada bir durayım. Belki diyecek bir şey gelir diye. Ya da belki de şey var. Hani Malfoy ne kadar böyle şey oldu. Hani o kadar emek verdim ben falan. Dumbledore'u konuşurken rahatladı falan böyle. Belki de Snape de böyle Dumbledore'u konuşarak rahatladı bir falan. İkili oynuyor. Herkese böyle yalan konuşuyor falan gibi bir rolü var. Bir şekilde anlaşılmak için içi parçalanıyor falan o seviyede. Hani böyle yediremiyor. Kendisi en kilit noktada en büyük emeği veren insanken böyle bir cover diye seslenilmeyi falan yediremiyor yani. Durum bu herhalde. Bir kere daha durayım. Diyecek bir şey var mıdır? Devam. And he slashed at the air. He felt a white hot whip like something hit him across the face. And he was slammed backward into the ground. Spots of light burst in front of his eyes. And for a moment all the breath seemed to have gone from his body. Then he heard the rush of wings above him. And something enormous obscured the stars. Buckbeak had flown at Snape. Who staggered backward as the razor sharp claws slashed at him. The eagle Snape Malfoy kurtarmayıp bu sefer bak bir geliyor Malfoy yaptı aynısını Snape yapıyor falan bir sürü paralellik var yine. As he raised himself into a sitting position, his head still swimming from its last contact with the ground, he saw Snape running as hard as he could. The enormous beast flapping behind him. And screeching as he had never heard a screech. Bir de şey de var herhalde. Snape yemin etti işte Malfoy'un annesine. Malfoy'u koruyacağım, kollayacağım, onun görevini yapacağım falan. Böyle bir Malfoy eşittir Snape falan oldu zaten kitap boyunca. Malfoy'un yaşadığı şeylerin aynısını yaşıyor oldu yani. Buradan diyecek bir şey çıkıyor mu düşünüp geliyorum. Devam. He struggled to his feet, looking around grudgingly for his wand, hoping to give chase again. But even as his fingers fumbled in the grass, discarding twigs, he knew it would be too late. And sure enough, by the time he had located his wand, he turned only to see the hippogriff circling the gates. Snape had managed to separate just beyond the school's boundaries. Hagrid muttered Harry, still dazed, Looking around, Hagrid, he stumbled over the burning house as an enormous figure emerged from out of the flames, carrying Fang on his back. With a cry of thankfulness, he sank to his knees. He was shaking in every limb. His body aged all over, and his breath came in painful steps. You're right, Harry. You're right. Speak to me, Harry. Hagrid's huge, hairy face was swimming above Harry, blocking out the stars. Harry could smell burnt wood and dark hair. He put out a hand and felt fangs, reassuringly warm and alive, but the quivering beside him. I'm all right, panted Harry. Are you? Of course I am. Take more than that, Take more than that to finish me. Harry put his hands under Harry's arms and raised him up with such force that Harry's feet momentarily left the ground before Harry could set him upright again. He could see blood trickling down Hagrid's cheek from a deep cut under one eye, which was swelling rapidly. We should put out your house, said Hagrid, the charmed Oga Aguamanti, knew it was somewhat like that, mumbled Hagrid. And he raised a small drink pink, flowery umbrella and said, Aguamanti, a jet of water flew out of the umbrella, umbrella tip. He raised his wound arm, which felt like lead. And murmured argument too, which felt like lead, dear, Bachmanager. Together, 
he and Agrid poured the water on the house until the last flame was extinguished. It's not too bad, said Hagrid. Hopefully, a few minutes later, looking at the smoking wreck, nothing Dumbledore won't be able to put dry. He felt a searing pain in his stomach at the sound of the name. In the silence and the stillness, horror rose inside them. Hagrid, I was bending up a couple of Borchuckle legs when I heard them coming, said Hagrid, sadly, sustaining at his wrecked cabin. They'll have been burned to twigs, poor little things. Hagrid, but what happened, Hiri? I just saw them, the eaters running down from the castle. But what the ruddy hell was Snape doing with them? Where is he gone? Was he chasing them? Was he chasing them? He, he cleared his throat. It was dry from panic and the smoke. Hagrid, he killed. Killed, said Hagrid loudly, staring down at Harry. Snape killed. What are you on about, Harry? Dumbledore, said Harry. Snape killed. Dumbledore. Hagrid simply looked at him, the little of his face that could be seen completely blank, uncomprehending. Dumbledore, what, Harry? He's dead. Snape killed him. Don't say that, said Hagrid roughly. Snape killed Dumbledore. Don't be stupid, Harry. What made you say that? I saw it happen. You couldn't have. I saw it, Hagrid. Hagrid shook his head. His expression was displeasing but sympathetic. And Harry knew that Hagrid thought he had sustained a blow to the head, that he was confused, perhaps by the after effects of a jinx. What must have happened was Dumbledore must have told Snape to go with them the eaters. Hagrid said confidently, I suppose he's got to keep his cover. Look. Let's get you back up to the school. Come on, Harry. He did not attempt to argue or explain. He was still shaking uncontrollably. Hagrid would find out soon enough. Too soon. As they directed their steps back toward the castle, Harry saw that many of its windows were lit now. He could imagine clearly the scenes inside as people moved from room to room, telling each other that the eaters had got in, that the mark was shining over Hogwarts, that somebody must have been killed. The oak front doors stood open ahead of them, light floating out onto the dry and the lawn. Slowly, uncertainly, dressing ground people were creeping down the steps, looking around nervously for some sign of the death eaters who had fled into the night. Harry's eyes, however, were fixed upon the ground at the foot of the tallest tower. He imagined that he could see a black huddled mess lying in the grass there. Though he was really too far away to see anything of the sort, even as he stared wordlessly at the place where he thought Dumbledore's body must lie, however, he saw people beginning to move toward it. What are they all looking at? said Hagrid. As he and Harry approached the castle front, Fang keeping as close as he could to their ankles. Was the lion on the grass? I added sharply, heading now toward the foot of the astronomy tower, where a small crowd was congregating. See it, Harry, right at the foot of the tower, under where the mark. Blind me. You don't think someone got through? I fell silent. The thought apparently too horrible to express aloud. He walked alongside him, feeling the aches and pains in his face and his legs where the various hexes of the last half hour had hit him, though in an oddly detached way, as though somebody near him was suffering them. What was real and inescapable was the awful pressing feeling in his chest. He and Hagrid moved dreamlike through the murmuring crowd to the very front where the dumbstruck students and teachers had left a gap. He heard Hagrid's moan of pain and shock, but he did not stop. He walked slowly forward until he reached the place where Dumbledore lay and crouched down beside him. He had known there was no hope from the moment that the full body bind curse Dumbledore had placed upon him lifted. Now that it could have happened only because its caster was dead. He had known there was no hope from the moment that the full body bind 
curse Dumbledore had placed upon him lifted, none that it could have happened only because its caster was dead or unconscious in some other way and learns get me avenge. But there was still no preparation for seeing him here, spread eagle, broken. The greatest wizard he had ever or would ever meet. Burada güzel bir gerçek İngilizce var. Abdullah şu an Dumbledore öldü. Onun tribündeyiz. Ne gerçek İngilizcesi falan diyorsunuz belki. Bay bakın. The greatest wizard Harry had ever or would ever meet. Şu ana kadar bildiği en iyisi ya da her ne olursa olsun başından sonuna ölene kadar bileceği en iyi. Heh. Güzel bakın. Had would'a dönüşünce nasıl bir anlam değişimi oldu ya. Tertemiz. Dumbledore's eyes were closed. But for the strange angle of his arms and legs, he might have been sleeping. He, is, he reached out, straightened the half-moon spectacles upon the crooked nose, and wiped a trickle of blood from the mouth with his own sleeve. Then he gazed down at the wise old face and tried to absorb the enormous and incomprehensible truth that never again would Dumbledore speak to him. Never, never again could he help. Yanılıyorsun Eri. İkisinde de yanılıyorsun. The crowd murmured behind Eri. After what seemed like a long time, he became aware that he was kneeling upon something hard and looked down. The luck that they had managed to steal so many hours before it had fallen out of Dumbledore's pocket. It had opened, perhaps due to the force with which it hit the ground. And although he could not feel more shock or horror or sadness than he felt already, he knew as he picked it up that there was something wrong. He turned the locket over in his hands. This was neither as large as the locket that he remembered seeing in the pensive, nor were there any markings upon it, no sign of the ornate ass that was supposed to be Slytherin's mark. Moreover, There was nothing inside but for a scrap of folded parchment wedged tightly into the place where a portrait should have been. Automatically, without really thinking about what he was doing, he pulled out the fragment of parchment, opened it, and read by the light of the many wounds that had now been lit behind it. To the Dark Lord, I know I will be dead long before you read this, but I want you to know that it was I who discovered your secret. I have stolen the real Horcrux and intend to destroy it as soon as I can. I face death in the hope that when you meet your match, you will be mortal once more. Sadece bir tane hortukluk yaptığını düşünüyor Voldemort'un. IAB He neither knew nor cared what the message meant. Only one thing mattered. This was not a Horcrux. Dumbledore had weakened himself by drinking that terrible potion for nothing. He crumpled the parchment in his hand, and his eyes burned with tears as behind him Fang began to howl. Chapter 29 The Phoenix Lament Lament Diyecek bir şey var mıdır? Nope, hadi görüşürüz.